and welcome to our Good Friday service. We enter into a holy place through the new and living way Jesus Christ has opened for us. We come as the holy people, born of the grace of Jesus Christ, delivered through his blood. Let us look to God and let us pray. We stand near the cross, O God, disturbed, distraught, discouraged. Yet we gather here as disciples, those whom Jesus loves. On this day of great solemnity, let us stand as witnesses to your great love for all the world, revealed in the outstretched arms of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our lesson is taken from the Gospel of John in the 19th chapter, beginning to read at verse 17. So they took Jesus, who went out bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, along with two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this one said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to each other, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, and the disciple whom he loved standing near. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your child. And then Jesus said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, and to fulfill the scripture, said, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. After receiving the vinegar, Jesus said, It is finished, and bowed his head and gave up the spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pontius Pilate, an interesting figure in the story of Jesus' crucifixion. Pontius Pilate may have been born in Scotland, or Spain, or Germany, there are local legends that associate him with Fortingal in Scotland, with Tarragona in Spain, and with 
Forsheim in Germany. His manner and place of death are also the stuff of legend. Some reports say that Pontius Pilate converted and became a Christian together with his wife. Others say that he was recalled to Rome and that he committed suicide. None of these stories can be confirmed, but some things are certain. Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea from A.D. 26 to 36. He would normally reside at the seaside town of Caesarea. He would come to Jerusalem only on occasion of great festivals, when the city would receive a large influx of visitors and the likelihood of disturbance would be greater. To counteract this danger, Pilate would have, at his command, a garrison of around 3,000 soldiers. Now, Pilate's responsibility was to preserve the peace, to prevent disturbance, to suppress agitation. As long as he kept Palestine quiet, he would be regarded as doing a good job. The Jewish people were notoriously difficult to handle in the Romans' eyes, and those Roman authorities were happy to give them a certain degree of self-rule, provided the taxes were duly paid and control duly exercised. Pilate was not popular, and his relationships with the Jewish leaders were always somewhat difficult. The last thing he needed was a political agitator to unsettle the uneasy peace he presided over. When Jesus is brought to the court, Pilate is initially very dismissive. See to it yourselves, he tells the visitors. Why disturb his mourning? But when the visitors insist, Pilate goes indoors and talks to Jesus personally. What is all this stuff about being a king? That is political. And when asked, Jesus is careful not to mislead the governor. Mine is not a kingdom of this world, he says. And pressed on the issue of kingship, Jesus replies, yes and no. No, not a political leader, but yes, a king of truth. Now Pilate can see the lie of the land. Truth, justice, morality. He does not deal in such things. He deals in power, superior force and advantage, and not in these wishy-washy virtues that good people like to talk about. This Jesus is no problem to him <laughs> now. He's a joke. A good man, no doubt. And for that reason, Pilate will try to save him. But a political threat? No. Maybe if he dresses him up like a king for a laugh, everyone will lighten up and the matter will drop. They'll go away and forget about it. But no. The sight of a scourged Jesus with crown and purple robe is the sign for the chant to begin. Crucify him! Crucify him! Now Pilate is rocking. His plan has misfired and the noisy crowd is getting restless. They up the ante now with accusations about being a son of God and of being a rival to Caesar. Pilate is now trapped. 
He has come to, to like this strange man, in a way, who is standing before him. Something has passed between them, and Pilate now sees how deeply good this man is. But it is too late. A call has been made. Jesus or Caesar, who is it to be? Pilate washes his hands to show that he disassociates himself from this judicial murder, but he cannot wash away responsibility for what he allows to happen next. He gives permission for the execution. The governor of Judea has shown us how weak a man he is. Political pressure cleverly exerted has made him a puppet in the hands of his subjects. And so Jesus is led away. There is one thing left for Pilate still to do. As governor, it is his responsibility to post a notice above the executed person to tell the public the nature of the crime. And so Pilate orders a notice to be made, Jesus, the Nazarene King of the Jews. And this notice is then copied into two other languages so that everyone will be left in no doubt about who the person is and what this person has done. Tom Wright, in his little book, John for Everyone, writes, Jesus is the fulfillment of prophecy and sacred song. He is the righteous sufferer. He is the true king. He is the one through whose shameful death the weight of Israel's sin, and behind that the sin of the whole world is being dealt with. The King of the Jews is God's chosen representative, not merely to uh, rule the world, but to redeem it. The notice is written out in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, and nailed like the victim to the cross. When the Jewish leaders complain about it, Pilate, for the one and only time, ironically, stands his ground. What I have written, I have written, he said. He will be pushed around no more this day. And at some point in life, a person must tell the truth. Little did Pilate know, on that day, he wrote the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our prayers of intercession, the last uh, uh, words of each petition will be, O Lord, do not be far away, and the response will be, O God, come quickly to help us, O God, come quickly to help us. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, on this day we pray in Jesus' name. Remember your church. Keep us faithful to the gospel, proclaiming the good news of salvation. Even in the face of danger and death, O Lord, do not be far away. 
Oh God, come quickly to help us. Remember <clears throat> your world. Rescue this perishing planet condemned by human cruelty. Do not let it be destroyed forever. O Lord, do not be far away. O oh God, come quickly to help us. Remember all nations. Break the sword and snap the spear. Trample the high walls and thorny fences that separate neighbors and nations. O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh God, come quickly to help us. Remember those who face death. Restore the lives of those who suffer. Give hope to those who are despairing. And welcome the dying into your arms. O Lord, do not be far away. O God, come quickly to help us. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, your suffering servant, our only hope of salvation, through whom we are bold to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Hold fast to your hope, for God is faithful. Amen.